Hello and welcome to the Operation Small Account Growth Performance Review for Week 51, 2020. This is again Jukka Karinen speaking and I'm happy to have you with us again. This week's agenda is exactly the same as always. We go through the action, we took five new positions, two cash flow trades and we closed three positions and got uh, out of 50% of two positions at roughly 100% profit. So basically that's what we do uh, when a longer term position has grown enough. We take the risk capital away so that we can reallocate and have more positions working for us. Current portfolio holdings, we'll go through those how much we're in profit and how how much we're in loss on those ones where we are in loss. Then we check the results, weekly and total results, and also the performance and statistics, including a benchmark against the S&P 500. So let's go right into that. The new mid to long term positions on week 51 were uh, the Michaels company, so MIK, June next year, 12.50 calls. This company has over 30% short interest, a very solid fundamentals, both growth and value numbers, and it is a very, very beautiful uptrend. Then we went also along Callaway Golf Company, so ELY, February calls, $22 calls. Uh, there we have 18% short interest, a Bollinger Band squeeze that was firing long, strong growth numbers, and again, a very beautiful uptrend. Then here, uh, some more XLB calls, so the basic materials sector. A strike of $70 and out to March 2021. The sector is still strong and it benefits from weaker dollar. So the weaker dollar kind of just generates more, more foreign demand for the US basic materials and that under normal circumstances is very good for the sector. And this also covers the short position. If it needs covering, the short position is shown here. So the XLB wasn't moving anywhere. So I sold 72 calls on Wednesday. And just of course on Thursday, the XLB started moving higher. So that's why on Thursday, then I took the 70 calls to offset this in case on December 31st expiration, we're above 72 and we don't dip well below 72 or uh, below 72 deep enough so that I can get my roughly 50% out. I also saw that IJH, which is the uh, S&P 500 mid caps ETF. So this basically turns our February uh, 240 calls into a calendar spread and locks in roughly 50% of the original risk as profits already. My goal, of course, with this one is to uh, flip it out rather soon and then repeat the trade. Unless the market starts crashing, which could happen. In which case I will keep this up for protection for as long as uh, the uptrend does not resume. The trades we closed in week 51. Here are the wins first. Uh, the AMD calls 20%. AMD core butterfly 17%. Well, of course, now that the week is over, I should have just kept these. I would have made much more than much more than what I made here. But I don't like these short expirations, and I do not usually like to hold hold until the end. I took the Cohen calls off at 50%, slightly more, and these two half positions. So 50% of the position I took off at slightly above 100 100%. Which basically allows me to recover the invested capital and put that back into use and reduce my risk on these positions. So now, wherever the stock uh, stock price goes, I can't anymore lose on this. I've already recovered more than what I put inside. That's very nice. I took a loss on the ACB calls. It was just a trade that went <laughs> went very very bad since the beginning, and well, I lost it all. Doesn't matter too much. Now 
let's go to the open positions next and by the way if at any point you feel like this is a cool video you like watching what we're doing in our portfolio and maybe this is even helpful to you i hope they are uh, subscribe to the channel or like the page wherever you're watching this for long-term positions what we have opened is the pinterest uh, 2022 65 calls now at plus 182 percent Ford call slightly down from previous week, plus 27%. Mattel up a lot from the previous reports, plus 115% on profit at this point. Uh, Turtle Beach, 98%, also massively up. General Motors down from the previous report, now on loss. Uh, Beezer Homes, I believe, up from previous reports, plus 32%. And Ebix still on loss, not much, but still. MIK, our new position, minus 15%. For midterm, we've got IJH, uh, plus 20. Pinterest, uh, plus 4.5, slightly down from previous report. XLC, plus 6.3, also slightly down. And the new position, ELY, plus 12%. Another new position, XLB, plus 4.7%. Oh, well, <laughs> that's slightly funny, but for short term, the Colfax calls are minus 42%. I don't like this progress too much. Uh, the Pinterest calendar calls, plus 148%. The plus is missing, but still, this is on profit, of course. The XLB, uh, now short term calls, that I opened, I believe, in November, then they were like midterm, minus 31%. And and from cash flow, the cash flow options, basically this one is minus 52% now, and the IJH is plus 19%. There we go. Then to the results. So what do we have in here? Week 51, so from Friday 11th to Friday 18th, it was a bit calmer week, action-wise. We went from 6,500 and some to 7,286. 11.41% portfolio growth, so very solid week again. Uh, the total now from October 8th until December 18th. Uh, 10 full weeks and a few days more. We have 79% success rate on close positions. Mid-term is very strong, short and long-term uh, mixed for now. Uh, generally, I've been all green on long-term and short-term has never been super strong for me, but I still do short-term trading as well. Almost 70% portfolio growth over the period uh, S&P 500 grew 7.39% in the same time, so this is not quite uh, 10x, but more than 9x growth anyway. I'm very happy with the results. And the performance graph is here. October was slow, November was super strong, December has been a bit shaky, which you see in here. Um, we started falling already before we started December, up and down, and then slightly up and now i'm recording this on monday when the markets are slightly down again we'll see where where the action heads from here net liquidation value of the account so nlv is trending the right way and i hope this continues of course now if we have a crash like in march my portfolio will be dropping but but i do have some buying power in reserve so thinking that this could be just another dip i'm i'm looking for opportunities to take some more to take some more positions if you are wondering how we do it i'm going to reveal the option investors method a short version of it right on this video so what we do first is we look at sector sectors and look for relative outperformers then within those sectors we do fundamental analysis for the best companies figure out uh, basically here we select the winning haystack and then we start finding the needle the best needles in the best haystacks once we have found the best needles we do some technical analysis to find good entry points for those trades 
we understand and manage our risk and use efficient option strategies. Like you have seen, we tend to go long when the time is right and as soon as we are well on profits, we try to tend to diagonalize those longer term positions or turn them into calendar spreads and then just trust the process and relax. So we don't do much at all this shorter term trading. Short term for us is one month or so. Our long term is at least half a year. I tend to go, go longer if possible, but all companies do not have leaps on them. So sometimes the longer term needs to be under a year. I would prefer it to be from one year up, but since that's not always possible, I, I'm happy to just also relax on this requirement and just call six months a long term already. That was a very, very short term version. You can go to optioninvestors.club and learn more. And also we have a very, very nice end of year discount starting. The uh, sales page isn't up yet, but it will be in quite a, quite a short amount of time. And if you're really in a hurry, you can simply leave an application. I hope you have a very, very nice and profitable week. See you next week.